There may be no greater pain than the one a parent may feel due to the loss of their child. And when that loss is the result of suicide, that pain can also be accompanied by guilt. Experts say that some parents may question what could have been done to stop this or what did they miss. And you have to understand and look for those triggers too. Because your child, may, you, may just, may, you may just see your child giving away prized possession that you know they love. Hey, I want you to have this baseball card. In December of 2016, Brandy Vila ended her own life with a single shot to the chest in her family's home. According to her sister, Brandy was a victim of cyberbullying and harassment. Just three months later in that same community, 15-year-old Bailey Lundy took her own life at a city park near her home in Texas City. Man, they got hurt. Uh, I'm a parent. Kids don't think about the future. They're kids. That's facts. They, I'm going to react off of reaction. Whatever happens, it happens. And i deal with it later. In the case of Brandy Villa, her teen tormentors are in jail charged with second degree murder. I, I hurt for that young lady. I hurt for the two kids that's going to jail. What about the rest of their life? What about their parents? Not a parent may be depressed. Mental health experts say that teens today have a lot more to deal with than those just one generation back. Negative images from a 24-hour news cycle, busy parents with little time to spend talking and listening, and social media. I would say access to social media and electronics and the amount of time that we're spending with electronics and social media versus as a family and as a unit. Ashantia Wolf is a trained and licensed therapist in the Houston area who has worked with teens in her private practice and with the Harris County ISD system. She says cyberbullying is a major contributor to the rise in teen anxiety, depression, and suicide. So what is cyberbullying? Cyberbullying can be in different forms of text. It can be in forms of a social media app. It can be email. We're talking about any electronic transmission um, of information. Some people think of cyberbullying as only through an app, but it can be in any of those electronic forms. And it's when there is can be a verbal or nonverbal um, threat or sense of harassment or sense of unsafety for the other student. And it doesn't have to be repeated. According to the Centers for Disease Control report in 2021, when it comes to suicide among teens, white teens have the highest death rate and attempts. Black and Latino teens in Harris County are below the national average, with these numbers dropping in the last two years. Wolf says that is due to more families in the black and brown communities getting help especially since the pandemic, with more minority families, ethnic minority families, seeking out mental health services. Experts like Wolf and Miller say that social media has a way of magnifying a situation, sometimes pushing a young person to their breaking point. You look at Bobby and Bobby has a new bike and you want a new bike <laughs> and you want a bike like Bobby, but then you don't realize that this is staged. The bike was given to Bobby for promotion, but this is what I want. Are you looking, you start to compare yourself to other people because it looks fabulous. Experts say something as simple as limiting screen time on social media can go a long way to helping a child deal with a difficult issue. However, Miller says it's not enough to listen to teens. A parent has to go one step further. Talking to them. Understanding your child is understanding your child, knowing what your child likes, knowing what they dislike. Being able to read their body language because they give you all the signals. Wolf believes that the key to understanding a child is to know who their friends are. She says they sometimes will tell their friends things that they feel they can't talk to an adult about. I tell parents is get to know your kids' friends and their parents. Because what I'm seeing is when I get a, uh, a lot of the reports that I get are not directly from the teen themselves. It's from a friend of the teen or an associate of the teen seeing something off or hearing something, then reporting it to their parent or a trusted adult. I have found some people to talk to and it's such a nice support to have best friends and parents that you can talk to whenever you feel down or you just know like, I don't, like if you can just have somebody there to talk to that I have, it just helps tremendously because I don't know what I would be able to do without them. Be Busy Inc. is partnering with the Jack and Jill Youth Program to help uplift the youth and hopefully help them grow to be healthy adults, both physically and emotionally. This is done by talking with young people in a frank, open, and respectful manner in a safe environment. The subject of emotional wellness is a big part of the conversation. There are certain ways you can approach to talking to a person with depression, and there's also certain ways you can talk to a person about how to regulate their behavior. 
and I learned that sometimes I may be per crossing some boundaries that I should not be crossing. I should sometimes may pry a little too much into their mental health or I sometimes tell them to stop acting a certain way when I shouldn't be telling them to do certain things that they may be comfortable telling me or not comfortable telling me or comfortable that they're doing in a certain situation. So 50% of most people who commit suicide suffer from major depression. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to counteract that. Uh, we know we won't go in there and save lives right off the rip, but what we do is we try to give them education so they can understand what depression is and they can catch themselves before it gets too big. It's important to have these conversations that can be uncomfortable for teens. Miller says it is important to let teens know it's okay to talk about how they feel. This program gives teens the basic tools to help them handle their emotions, talk about their feelings, and how to deal with other teens that may be going through depression or stress. I took away a really good lesson of learning boundaries in relationships and especially learning when to talk to a trusted adult when you're feeling helpless in certain situations because sometimes you may not feel like they may not be there for you but there's many people out there and there's always help available and that's what a really valuable lesson that I learned today. Yes, uh, it's very important to get professional help because with the right interventions based on the concerns, based on and diagnosis, then there's a great a probability of success and progress and hope, right? Um, also, going to a professional helps interweave that supportive web. Now you have somebody else that's in the mix to support that person and not just a family member and not just a school, but a whole entire community coming together behind that person. If you or anyone you know is battling depression and thoughts of suicide, help is available. The Crisis Hotline is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. To speak with the Crisis Counselor, call 832-416-1177. For more information on the Crisis Hotline, visit thecrisishotline.org. With Be Busy News, I'm Gloria Tucson.